How's it going, YouTube? Broke Boy Tactical here, and I hope that everybody is having a great day. I just posted a video entitled Range Time, the first 50 rounds through my brand new Smith & Wesson MMP Shield Plus 9mm. So we're going to talk about this awesome little gun here. If you like my content, hit like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and show you guys that we are clear. There's our feed ramp, as you can see. There's no ammo in there. Empty magwell. Hello. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger. This is a safe direction. This is a controlled environment. Okay. All right, so I have some mostly awesome, awesome things to say about this pistol. And I'm not going to lie, I have a couple of negatives. I do. I have a couple of gripes about this gun. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, start with the features here real quick. So the magazine I've got here right now is the extended magazine. This is the magazine I keep in the firearm when I'm at home. It's supposed to hold 13 rounds of 9mm, giving you a capacity with one in the chamber of 14 rounds, which is pretty damn good. Except the fact that this magazine only holds 12. And at the range, I could only squeeze 11 in here at one time. So I'm definitely going to have to call Smith & Wesson and have them replace this magazine. Or send me a new follower or a spring. There's something going on in here. I have a, I have an inkling that it has something to do with the follower. When I stick my light in here and I push it down, I can see that the, the spring is kind of coming up over the uh, past out the follower. I think it's just getting hung up, hung up on something, but that's just my guesstimate. Either way, I can't get more than 12 rounds into the magazine. So for me to uh, get 13 rounds in here, I would have to load one into the chamber and then insert my magazine just to have 13 rounds when I should have 14. Uh, it, will it do in the meantime? Yes, this magazine was 100% reliable at the range today. Uh, it kicked ass, so I mean it'll do until my replacements get here or new springs, whatever have you. With the flush magazine, you're going to get 10 rounds in the magazine with one in the chamber, giving you a capacity of 11 in this very, very small, lightweight, uh, thin frame pistol. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, I thought you hated the LCP Max. Why'd you go for a Micro 9? Well, if you watched that video, I said that in my uh, when I was carrying the LCP Max, I just I found myself wanting to carry it inside the waistband. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. A pistol like the LCP Max is no more comfortable than the uh, the uh, Smith & Wesson MMP Shield Plus here or the 6-hour P365 or the Hellcat or the GX4 in my experience. It's just it just didn't really have a whole lot going for it. It was just like a Micro 9 but slightly smaller but chamber, chambered in 380. And I was carrying my TP9 Elite SC with me all the time made by Canik and I got to tell you guys it's a fantastic gun, but it's not as good as this. It's not. Uh, the trigger is misleadingly good because when you get it out of the box, it, you think it's going to kind of suck. And I'm going to show you guys that we are clear here again because I'm going to pull the trigger. The trigger itself has got a very short take up. I like that. Not a whole lot of travel. No grit. Very smooth. Distinct wall. Very clean break. The reset is positive and consistent. It just feels weird. Yeah, it just feels a little gritty, but I think that's going to work itself out over time. But it's consistent and it's crisp. And um, I can get some really good follow-up shots with this. I think that my uh, if you go watch that video, you'll see that I did some pretty good shooting on the first target. They, they, they didn't turn the AC on for me. You'll see that in the video as well until about halfway through my visit. So I got kind of sweaty in that warehouse. It's already about 104 degrees outside, so it was about 120 in there. So I started pulling left on a lot of my shots. But you can tell by the first target that this firearm at 10 yards is a freaking tack driver and the trigger while maybe not as like smooth feeling i will say um i can shoot this just as well as my canic tp9 elite sc except it's not nearly as wide it's not nearly as heavy uh this has better sights out of the box i have a three dot tritium sight system here i'm gonna try to get this on camera but i have an orange front dot for daytime so this acts as a blacked out rear and you can acquire that orange dot like it's nobody's business. Whether the backdrop is white, black, green, it doesn't matter. This sight picks up, and I love it. And also in the nighttime, you have three very bright tritium three-dot sights set up here. The sights are metal. It comes optics ready. Uh, I just I took it to the range. I oiled it, and I got to say, guys, I like this pistol. I like this pistol. Once I get down the wonkiness of the trigger, it's not bad. It's just different. I'm used to Glocks and Rugers, and they have more of a stiff, crisp break and a more audible, slappy reset. Like, you can definitely feel it against your finger a bit more. This guy, it's there. You can definitely feel it. The audio, not so much worried about. But uh, feeling it, that's really all I'm worried about. And I got to say that I can get some pretty good follow-up shots with this gun. I like this 
far, far better than my Glock 43X. I mean, like, I love it far more. Uh, especially with this extended grip, it's, it's far more comfortable to shoot, but oddly enough, I am less accurate with this grip. Go watch the video. The best shots that I had were with the flush magazine here. And it's because I can get like a perfect tight, and I mean tight for me, just a tight, full grip. And it gives me far more control, and it doesn't have nearly as much wiggling around down here. This thing does not jump out of my hands like with the recoil. Instead of like, you know, it jumping and you having to readjust, I mean, seriously, it's just... This grip texture is very aggressive when you're playing around with it, but when you're shooting it, you don't even notice. And that's just playtime at the range. So I would imagine in a self-defense situation, you would notice that even less. Uh, this is an excellent gun. I, I don't know what everybody is tripping about. This gun catches a lot of flack, but for the sight system that I picked up out of the door, optics ready. Uh, the only thing that's really wrong is a magazine issue. And let's be real here. All companies, Ruger, Glock, Smith & Wesson, Canik, uh, CZ. I have had a magazine problem with all these companies, Taurus especially, and they always send me new magazines. I'm going to call Smith & Wesson. I'm going to have them send me a new spring, or I'm going to have them you know, replace this entire damn magazine. Either way, I'm pretty sure they're going to fix it because I've heard this is a very common, common problem. But you know, in the meantime, 12 rounds plus one, 13 in a size this big, which is still very concealable. Like I can, you know, hide this behind my palm still. This is still a very, very comfortable pistol to shoot. Oddly enough, uh, I didn't film this. I only had enough time on my camera for about 10, 15 minutes. So I cut it off at 10 minutes. I shot a hundred, I think I, yeah, 150, 200 rounds today. Did I shoot 200? I'm going to say 150 to be safe. I forgot what I said in the beginning. I have my boxes somewhere around here. I put three to four boxes through the ammo today. Oh, that's right. No, no, no. I, um, Critical, oh, that's right. One of these was a box of 25. So I guess 175 rounds today is what I put through the gun. And I got to say, I had one, one malfunction, okay? And I think it was ammo related. I was shooting this ammo incorporated, and I had what appeared to be a light primer strike. But I'm looking at this round here, and I got to say, let me get out of the camera here so this will focus. That doesn't really look like a light strike to me. It looks like a pretty dead-on strike. And I, I know it's blurry, but there's no striker drag, anything like that that's dead center. This was a good strike. Just a dud ammo. Just dud ammo. Uh, here's another uh, empty casing. Once again, center mass on the primer strike. No drag. Come on, focus. No drag. No wonky expansion on the casings. I had a couple of flyers come back and hit me, but again, I'm shooting these refurbished brass. So, I mean, I'm probably going to chalk that up to the ammo. It was like two out of 175 rounds. And I, out of the critical duty right here, absolutely no problems at all. Uh, I went ahead and got another box. I loaded, a, I loaded up uh, 22 rounds that I could load into my firearm and my spare magazine right here. And I got to say, the critical uh, defense is definitely what I'm going to be shooting through this gun. It's... Uh, yeah, it's absolutely excellent. It feeds it. I also bought a box of PMC bronze uh, hollow points. It was a box of 50 for uh, 20 bucks. And I got to say, I put a couple of those through them as well uh, off camera. They fed great. So they're going to be some nice backup hollow points in case I can't find my preferred ammunition. They were very accurate. I have got the targets right here. I can get them out from back here. All right. First one we're going to show you is the target I started on. This is at 10 yards. I got two flyers right here. But as you can see, I've even hit in the same spot a couple of times. That's 10 rounds right here, right to the head. Not bad. I was aiming for the heart region right here, and I was shooting high. And like I said, I'm getting used to this trigger, but I did somehow manage to stay under the left shoulder and in this nice little region right here. So I do consider that a win. And my center mass shots were pretty damn good at 10 yards at rapid fire. I wasn't trying to take my time. I just uh, was shooting about as fast as I could control the new gun. And I think I did okay. So, yeah, if you want to see how the rest of the trip went, definitely go check out that video. Uh, I'm really glad I was finally able to get to the range and actually test these firearms out for you guys. Uh, the safety works just like it should. It did not come on at the range. It's very easy to disengage while being 
kind of a pain in the butt to engage. It's a very thoughtful safety, meaning that this isn't going to come on accidentally. But if you ever did need to use it for whatever reason, disengaging it is very intuitive. You can reach it without altering your grip. Yeah, it's a very nice little safety. I actually like this safety. Uh, don't only like safeties on my carry guns, but I have a kid now. She's getting curious, and until she can earn my trust a little bit that she's going to stay out of my stuff, I prefer my pistols to have safeties on them. I know a lot of people are going to disagree, but it's a personal choice. Um, I have trained with safety, so I'm not worried about it affecting my performance with the firearm at all. So I'm going to go ahead and chalk this up to an ammo malfunction. This is cheap ammo. It, it really is. It's like $14 for a box of 50. Uh, it's good refurbished ammo. I think it's refurbished ammo, but um, like I said, look at that. Perfect strike. No drag. Uh, I think it was just I think it was just a dud. It happens. But the firearm, other than this one little malfunction, performed very adequately. Out of the box, my only gripe would be that my, my 13 round magazine, and just so you guys know, I'm not full of it. That says 13 right there at the bottom. Uh, it's only holding 12, as you can see. It needs to come down one more bullet, and it just. That's just not happening, not even with a speed loader. So. Uh, it is what it is. The firearm still works, and it'll do until my new magazine gets here. So this thing gets a pass for me. All firearms have quirks. I'm just glad they were quirks that did not affect the reliability of the firearm. I don't think it was a light primer strike, even though I said it in the video. Again, I think this was a cheap ammo problem because out of the 150, 175 rounds that I put through the gun today, I just don't. I didn't have any malfunctions other than maybe a couple of flyers, like two out of the whole bunch, come back and hit me right here. But again, cheap ammo. The Federal and the PMC Bronze performed adequately, and I mean just very adequately. All the pullers, all the shots were not the ammo or the gun's fault. That was me pulling the shots. This gun's a solid pass. It's a keeper. This is definitely going to be my new carry gun for the hot days when I need a 9mm to cover to save my bacon and I do not want to carry or rely on my LCP. Thanks for sticking around, guys. See you next time.